What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Versperl and for today's video, I wanna talk about some changes I'm making to my gear for 2020. Now, after a lot of research and procrastination, I decided to pull the trigger and get the Nikon Z7. Now, I'm really glad I waited because about a year after the D850, Nikon released the Z6 and the Z7 cameras. Now, these mirrorless cameras are really good at still images, but they're also good at video, much better than a DSLR in my opinion. Now, typically, I would always bring my DSLRs and I'd also bring a Sony RX10 to take my 4K video, and I don't have to do that with a mirrorless system. So that was one of the big benefits. And in the past, people have asked me why I don't switch to Sony if I wanted a good hybrid camera. And to be honest, I'm just so used to Nikon's button and layout system that I really want to stick with them. I'm a loyal fan and I'm really impressed with their lenses that have come out for these cameras. They're sharper, lighter, and just more compact, which is a huge advantage out in the field. For example, as a landscape photographer, one of my most used lenses is my Nikon 14-24 f2.8 and my Tamron 15-30 f2.8 on my second body for time lapses. Both these lenses are fantastic, however, they are huge and weigh over 2 pounds each, not including the weight of the Nikon D800s, which is an additional 2 pounds each as well. These two setups take up a lot of space in my camera bag and don't leave me much room for my vlogging gear, a drone, a GoPro, other lenses, a star tracker, lens filters, and other miscellaneous camera accessories. I'm extremely excited to use a Nikon 14-30 f4 lens with my Z7 next year for astrophotography as well as landscape photography. I mean, just look at the size of this thing compared to the Nikon 14-24 f2.8. And I know what you're thinking, it's a 2.8 versus an f4. But tests have shown that even if you stop down the 14 to 24 lens to f4, it is less sharp corner to corner than this smaller, lighter Nikon 14 to 30 millimeter lens. I also know they're going to be releasing the 14 to 24 2.8s lens in the near future. However, I plan on using my star tracker and stacking techniques, so I'm not too worried about using an f4 lens for astrophotography. The 14 to 30 millimeter S lens attached to the Z7 only weighs around two and a half pounds, which is almost half the weight of my Nikon D800 and 14 to 24 millimeter setup. Also, did I mention the 14 to 30 millimeter S lens is threaded, so it could take an 82 millimeter filter, which I could use on all my other lenses by just buying a step up ring. This is a huge weight and space saver if you compare it to my older filters that I used to use for my Tamron and Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter lens, as you see here. Now I'm not sure if the anticipated 14 to 24 millimeter S lens will have a filter thread or not. My guess would be no, just by looking at the mock-up version. So I'm going to steer clear of this lens due to the fact that it'll be large and heavy, which defeats the whole purpose of me downsizing my gear. Instead, I'm actually really excited for the 20 millimeter 1.8 S lens, which is also expected to be released in 2020. This will probably be my go-to lens for night time lapses on my second camera body when it becomes available. And I also just want to give a quick shout out to Richie Talk's YouTube channel. He has been testing out a lot of these new S lenses as they become available. And so far the sharpness, not just in the center, but corner to corner, have been superior to the Nikon DSLR lenses. Also, the Z cameras have in-body image stabilization, so any lens you mount to it can be stabilized to help prevent blurry images when shooting at slower shutter speeds. So this is a great sign that Nikon is still raising the bar with their camera equipment. Now, are these Z cameras perfect? No, but they are on the right track. I think the battery life is pretty good, but there's always room for improvement. And I know a lot of people complain that there's only one single card slot, which I get it if you're an event or wedding photographer, having a backup card slot is extremely important. But I think overall, Nikon is heading in the right direction with this mirrorless system, which is something I've been waiting for them to do for a long time because I really don't wanna switch everything over to Sony if Nikon didn't start catching up to them. Lastly, another added bonus with this upgrade is when I travel on a plane, I typically bring smaller and lighter tripods, which can get a little sketchy when mounting my heavy camera equipment onto it. So by transitioning to this lighter mirrorless system, the tripods will be under less stress since I won't be pushing them to their limits, which I often did. Another change I made for 2020 is my vlogging setup. I sold off my Sony RX10 and decided I would just record everything with my GoPro as well as my Nikon Z cameras. The biggest challenge I found with vlogging with the GoPro Hero 7 is my audio. Now I know the GoPro Hero 8 is supposed to have a mic, a screen, and a light addition for it. However, my Hero 7 is still relatively new and I didn't want to spend more money on a whole new GoPro system. 
So after some research, I found a vlogging case, mic adapter, and a microphone that seems to work relatively well with my Hero 7, which sounds much better than the built-in microphone. So I'm really excited for 2020 and the trips I have planned out to put my new gear to use. Uh, as you know, hiking with lighter and more compact equipment makes life so much easier and it really helps out tremendously. If you guys want to follow along with my future endeavors, please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. Also, please check out the affiliate links below. It really helps this channel grow. So thank you guys so much for your support and leave a comment if you guys are changing anything for the new year. Take it easy. Bye.